you see how business works. And um, for me, this bringing up of Obamacare, socialized medicine, that's an absolute failure, just like socialism itself is an absolute failure. And yet we continue to march towards socialized medicine. And the Democrats have an avowed socialist as one of their primary contenders. I mean, it's almost surreal to me. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely insane, and, and it brings me to my next point. You know, uh, and I don't mean to be harping. I don't mean to be harping about uh, on talk radio, but this is what I do. I listen to talk radio. I like to know what's going on. I don't listen. I don't watch TV anymore. I don't listen to the lamestream media any longer. But uh, you know, today Andrew Wilkow went after indirectly, uh, indirectly went after those that are calling Donald Trump supporters Nazis or brown shirts. He said, if you are calling Donald Trump supporters Nazis, then you can't call yourself a conservative. Um, and he, he goes on to say that, how can you call a man who killed millions of people uh, Nazis um, when uh, when when that's that's a fought, that's a big stretch and 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 he was really frustrated and he didn't want to he and he had the callers calling in saying oh we know who you're referring to you're referring to Glenn Beck he goes I'm not going to say who it is it's everybody as a whole you know when you call you shouldn't attack other people's supporters if you if you attack the candidate that's one thing but if you attack the supporters that's that's another thing. Yeah, well, I can just tell you, uh, you know, my my travels in this uh, fight against. Uh, uh, you know, the Marxist takeover of America, basically through the arm of healthcare, uh, has, has uh, allowed me to see a lot of these people at the top of the ladder. Uh, and I know that um, there always seems to be a problem with egos. And, uh, you know, I've been in situations where, you know, the, the who's going to get to be on TV and who's going to get to give the speech. And as Mark Levin likes to say who gets to lead the parade becomes a big issue whereas you know guys like you and me i just want a country for my kids to grow up in that's free and full of opportunity like the one i grew up in mm -hmm. and uh you know these guys are just they're they're killing me with this non-stop donald trump stuff look the guy's not a saint but neither are any of the other people running they all have issues that i have problems with Marco Ruby is an absolute no go. Oh Let's get into that. That 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 issue with the Gang of Eight is just a flat out betrayal, sellout, crony capitalist establishment deal. Ted Cruz was soft on immigration, and he's gotten harder because of Donald Trump. Now, look, Donald Trump has his issues over the years, and I know you can tell me a lot of stuff, but at least on the issues that matter to me, health care, um, uh, bringing jobs back. And uh, the border, he's saying all the right things and he's going to the right people. He went to Jeff Sessions on immigration and he's not talking about, you know, bringing in the nice folks or the educated folks. He's saying, I want to build a wall, mm -hmm. which is what we want. People are emigrating or immigrating to this country and they're changing it into something we don't recognize. And I'm sorry, I don't want that to happen. Our country is the most awesome country that has ever existed and while i understand and people on this radio show listening understand retweet, the role retweet. immigrants have tweet. have played tweet that I'm on the air. uh you know it's just it's just not acceptable and look donald trump is a guy who has the teflon with the media he controls the narrative he's saying he's going to build a wall and look on the health care issue people are trying to make this argument about he's pushing single payer I'll be the first one to admit that Donald Trump probably doesn't know a whole lot about how to reform health care, but he's saying the right things. Mm -hmm. He's talking about health savings accounts. He's talking about improving uh, competition across state lines. He's talking about free market uh, options, which tells me that he's talking to the right people on health care reform, just like he talked to Jeff, Jeff Sessions on immigration. And so, you know, I got a guy on my side of the football who seems like he's able to manage the uh, – the uh, media, uh, he doesn't wilt like a precious flower when people get in his face. He fights back. And uh, if he builds a wall and he, he repeals Obamacare and implements some free market uh, um, capitalism there, I, I, I'll be pretty satisfied with that. It'll be a heck of a lot more than we've gotten in the last 30 years. Exactly. You're listening to New Media Patriot Radio. I'm your host, Chris. And on the Rebooting Liberty Hotline, I have Dr. Scott. You can follow him uh, on Twitter at uh, Dr. Scott underscore Atlanta. 
Um, you know, speaking of, speaking of Marco Bot Rubio, he's uh, he's going on the news and he keeps repeat. I don't know if you saw the uh, the, the the clip the other day going around uh, when he was on uh, Bill O'Reilly. He basically was he was repeating himself over and over again to Bill, and Bill was like laughing. He was like, "Are you kidding me?" Bill was trying to ask him. So, what are you going to do with the with the illegals that are here? Well, it'll be what the people want it to be. Uh, whatever they want, no. Like he's so yeah. weak on, and this is why I like Trump because he stands like he stands by his words. He's not like and. and and again, I will vote for Ted Cruz. I would vote. I will vote for Ted Cruz. I vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. Rubio, I'm, they're gonna have to drag me to the polls to to, uh, to vote for him. And and and, and not and, and to, not to not so much knock Ted Cruz, but anytime Ted Cruz is put on a defense about his his past uh, stance on immigration or the TPA or you know the poison pill, quote unquote. Um, he he sounds his defense sounds like the like I, I said this on my last show. It sounds like the uh, the fine print. Of a cell phone contract, it's so convoluted. You know, just yeah. get to the point. And this is why yeah. this is why people like Trump because he says it. You know, he talks like like you and I, like me. I'm not the most articulate guy. You are more articulate than I am. But I'm just saying, he talks. He's like one of us. You know what I mean? Um, but but let's talk about Ted. Uh, let's talk about not Ted Cruz. Uh, Marco Rubio. Um, it, it was it was. Uh, there's a poll that came out that he's he's actually in third place in his in his home state of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. I don't know who's voting for this guy. Look, anybody who's conservative has to know that immigration is destroying this country. What he did with the Gang of Eight, riding the backs of the Tea Party to power and prominence by quoting the Constitution and the Federalist Papers and all the things that guys like you and me want to hear. And the first thing he does with power, prominence and notoriety is run into the arms of Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin. I'm sorry, that is flat out unforgivable. And it shows me that the guy's like not even shy about selling out. I mean, that is just unbelievable. And for them to say, oh, well, I was, you know, it was going to, Marco's using this this narrative that, well, it was going to happen anyway. And I just wanted to make it as good as it was as possible. No, it wasn't. We controlled the Senate. Nothing about immigration had to come up at all. And the fact that you guys put that thing, that that came within a whisker of getting passed if it wasn't for an over-the-top grassroots effort on Dave Bratt uh, defeating Eric Cantor, that thing would have gone through. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's insane. You know, also he 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 goes on to uh uh Marco Rubio goes on to attack not only Breitbart uh which uh which, you know, we'll get into that later. Glenn Beck attacked Breitbart as well and and yeah. uh, Stephen K Bannon. We'll get to that later. But, you know, Marco Rubio attacks um the 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 ICE office uh the I uh Chris I think his name was Chris Crane the uh, ICE yeah. officer, basically, ICE, yeah. basically uh, you know, I don't know if you read the story, but he basically got kicked out yeah. from from uh, from um, the 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 uh, what was it the meeting the uh, yeah the, he got kicked out of the meeting because he he wanted to ask a question about uh, you know the amendments that Marco had had promised him that were going to be in this bill uh, regarding uh, you know border support and and and, and uh, you know beefing up border security, and he basically ignored him and he watched them as he was escorted out by yeah. by security. Yeah, and, he, and then, uh, here you have a decorated Marco, a decorated marine being escorted out. Yep, That's yep. Crazy. And then Marco tried to make the uh, argument that he was some sort of union leader and that he was not an ICE agent. And it's just really look, Marco Rubio is, uh, you know, not not he is not um, apologizing or changing his position vocally or full throated fashion on the Gang of Eight on the one hand, and on the other hand. He um, he's on Univision telling them that he's going to, you know, continue with this amnesty gig. And I'm thinking to myself, does he not know that we can read this? That's what I, I mean. I, I, I can that out, see yeah. that this is happening. And I, I mean, I just and what I don't understand is for you, Marco Rubio supporters out there. What are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, I can understand the crony capitalist arrangements in D.C. and the power brokers. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But for the regular citizens out there that, you know, are, you know, under the mantra of we want our country back, what are you thinking voting for Marco Rubio? I'll tell you something else, Chris. I don't know if I can pull the lever for Marco Rubio because I feel like if I get him, if Marco Rubio gets the nomination, we're going to get Common Core. We are going to get Obamacare. We're going to get the profligate spending. Um, and, and at the end of the disastrous eight years, if he gets two terms, it's going to have a Republican brand on it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if we're going to get those things, I just assume crash the whole thing and, uh, you know, let it have a Democrat brand on it. And maybe someday 
you know, we can get our act together and start digging out of this hole. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, this is a really, really scary time. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see our, our leaders, Obama, just routinely violating uh, the Constitution, violating the law, uh, there's absolutely no pushback. Um, I mean, it's a frightening time. It really is. It is. I want to give a big shout out to uh, we have a couple of listeners listening. Uh, Jim Maddox. Uh, he says, build a wall. No Rubio or Cruz. We're mad as hell. Ted Cruz signed the Corker bill, which he did. Uh, which gave the Iran. I, I spoke about that on a previous show. Uh, Ted Cruz did sign the Corker Bill, which gave gave up uh, the, uh, the the treaty. Uh, the, you know, uh, gave up the treaty clause. Um, it didn't treat the Iran nuke deal as a treaty. Um, and, and he's, he he signed the Corker Bill. And this is what yeah. I'm telling you. And this yeah. is and let's let's go on with Ted Cruz. Let's go. Let's touch on Ted Cruz for a bit here, because here you have a guy who I don't know if you remember way back when when he actually was. It was during the summer. Uh, where he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm for the. TPA, there's not. I read, I read the bill. I read the bill. Then, then the the, the media kept pushing him. Did you really read it? He's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I read it. There's nothing. There's nothing in it that's uh, you know ominous or you know there's nothing. There's nothing in it that's that's bad. And then he kept pushing him and pushing him. He got hammered on social media. I remember because I was one of them. Um, he got hammered on social media how this was terrible. Not to not to vote for the TPA because it's terrible. You don't want to give this presidency. You don't want to give this presidency. Uh, or, you know that leeway. So um, he. At the last minute, because of all that flack, he changed he changed his vote. But at that but by that time, the vote I mean it, they already had all the votes for, for for TPA to pass. So for me, it was a show vote. <clears throat> just like just like the poison pill, which I felt he was playing both sides of the aisle. He said, you know what? I'll present this. If it passes, then I look good for my donor, for my donors. And if it doesn't, I look great. I could present it as a poison pill and I look great for my voter base. Right. And I, I, I agree with your analysis there. And in defense of Ted Cruz, because, look, we have to pick somebody, right? I mean, somebody's one of these guys is going to be president. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it cannot be Hillary and it cannot be Bernie Sanders, which I, I just can't even believe I have to say that out loud. But, uh, I mean, it's going to be one of these people. And, uh, you know, you cannot get – look, you get somebody like uh, Jim DeMint. He got into the Senate, and I like Jim DeMint. I read his book, uh, Saving Freedom, or whatever it was, and I really appreciate what he said. He, he described a lot of the uh, arm twisting that goes on, you know, talks about how George Bush came in and basically browbeat him into signing No Child Left Behind. And the, the problem is, if you're going to be a Louis Gohmert type, you're going to really stick to your guns, really, um, really espouse freedom and liberty, they ostracize you. I mean, they put you in a corner, and that's why Jim DeMent left the Senate. He was like – and I, he told me flat out. He's like, I just can't do anything here. They won't appoint me to any uh, committees. And so he left and he went to Heritage where he feels like he can do more to promote the cause of conservatism. So that's the problem with all of those positions. Those guys are all corrupt to the core just about. And right. so I, I kind of give Ted Cruz a little bit of a pass in that – He's trying to play the game so that he can get into position to, you know, win the presidency and hopefully affect change. And I I'm going to be the first to admit that I don't think a guy like me could ever do that, you know, saying the things that I say and not compromising on principle mm -hmm. just because I think you can't get over the wall of the donors and, the you know, the big lobbies up there. And so. While I understand your point, I'm and I'm disappointed in Dead Cruz for for some of those issues. I kind of understand it a little bit. Okay. And you're still the thing is is you're still taking a leap of faith with Donald Trump too. Right. I mean, you know, as long as he's doing the things that we want to do, I love it. But if he starts, you know, you know, if people get in his ear about single payer, let's say, and convince them that you know Medicare for all is the way to go, and he starts doing that, well, now I got a guy who's Teflon who's going against the very things that we stand for. So, you know, it's all a crapshoot. And I got to be well, honest with you, full disclosure, I haven't decided either way right now. I, I'm Cruz or Trump. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, here's the thing. And be, before we go, uh, before we keep going on to, to Ted Cruz, I have something else to say about, uh, I mean, Ted Cruz, about uh, Marco Rubio. I got plenty on Marco Rubio um, to fill up three hours of, uh, of airtime. But anyway, before I get to that, uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, about Donald Trump and, and, and uh, worrying about what he's going to do. I will guarantee you this. OK, uh, by the way, you listen to New Media Patriot Radio. I'm your host, Chris. And on the Rebooting Liberty Hotline, I have Dr. Scott. You can follow him uh, on Twitter at uh, Dr. Scott underscore Atlanta. This is this is what this is why 
it it doesn't worry like not that I'm worried, but this is this is what's going to happen. If Donald Trump becomes president, I guarantee you that Congress, the GOP majority in Congress, 